Good morning, sir. Good morning. The CO is with Lieutenant Vincent now, sir. Right. Lead on, will you? Aye, sir. He's still hanging on, but don't ask me how. Phillips, this is the Deputy Director, Naval Research. How to do? Is there any point in our waiting here? No, not at the moment. If he shows any sign of being able to speak, I'll send to at once. Right, thanks. You won't have eaten, Jeff. I'll have something organized for you. Thanks, but they gave me a bite of the plane coming up. How about the torpedo man who was with it? Jackson? Not a trace. He may have been blown to smithereens, or he may be on the bottom with what's left of the submarine. We'll have to wait for the diver's report. Did you get it on the tape? Yes, not that it helps us. Still, I should like to hear it. Certainly. Target speed, eight knots. Eight knots. Deflection angle, ten degrees left, sir. Ten degrees left. All right, stand by. Aye, aye, sir. We're coming on to our firing course. Here we go. Fire! Well, that's the lot. At least we know one thing. The torpedo left the submarine before it exploded. Could we have a word with Wharton? Yes, of course. Wharton. Sir? Tell us about the trial, Warden. How was Vincent feeling about it? I think he felt quite confident, sir. Hmm. I suppose there was never any question of the explosive not having been stabilized. He's been carrying out tests for over a year, sir. The results are all here. Thanks. I want to look at those. If there's one man who knows about DPT, it's Vincent, sir. I'm sure you won't find the error in his calculations. It's much more likely to have been a faulty component. You're a great admirer of Vincent, aren't you, Warden? 
I'm very proud to work with him, sir. Now then. It's all over, I'm afraid. He's gone. He was never able to speak a word. All right, Warden. Perhaps you'll have somebody put his things together, would you? Oh, yes, sir. Sorry, I'm afraid there was nothing we could do. It was quite hopeless. Thanks, John. Well, Jeff, what do we do now? We've lost a good volunteer rating and our best scientist. Do we carry on? Oh, yes. Weight for weight, DPT is ten times more powerful than any other explosive we've got this side of the atom. If we can make it work. Can we put Wharton in Vincent's job, then? No, 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 that's not possible. We've got to have someone who knows at least as much as Vincent about DPT, if not more. Is there anyone who knows more than Vincent did, Jeff? No, I don't think there is. Not in this country. Then what do we do? Do? How do I know what they'll do? I know what they ought to do. Send us all on 14 days leave. Char's up. We've only been here three weeks, Budge. Oh, that's long enough on this ruddy 4 by 2 rock a few hours for me. They're going to need a bit of time to get things sorted out after last night, I guess. That's right, I guess. What are they going to do about us in the meantime, stuck out here like the Swiss family Robinson? Well, come on, have it. Oh, sorry. Thanks very much, Budge. It's all right for Haggis. He's not on foreign soil. But I can do with a sniff of old London again. Touch of the bright lights. Where do you live, Sprog? Me? Oh, nowhere, Budge. Nowhere? Come off it. Everybody has to live somewhere. Where's your mum and dad live? Nowhere. Eh? Well, I haven't got none. That's why I volunteered for this. A kid like you. You want your brains tested. Never volunteer. I've had that drilled into me ever since I was a boy seaman. Never volunteer for nothing. But you volunteered for this, Budge. Aye, he did that. So you don't have to take him too seriously, Sprog. It's not the same thing at all. I volunteered on compassionate grounds. Purely private, personal, and highly domestic. Why, being stuck out in this hole is just one more black mark against Cleland. Cleland? Who's that? Somebody whose throat I'm gonna cut from ear to ear if ever I meet up with him. And I mean that. Now stop scaring the children, Badger, and get me a cup of tea. I don't see why you should draw sixpence a day extra for doing Sweet Fanny Adams. Letter for you, Agus. How do you fancy it? Tarble Dotty or a la carte? Trouble it as well for poor old Jackson. Well, we've got no forward and address for him. We'd best put them with the rest of his gear. I've packed his kit bag. Scunthorpe. That'll be his wife. They loved him. Yeah? What you said, I've been working it out. Sixpence a day for 365 days comes to nine pound two and a tanner. Now, that's not much for a year's cooking, is it? 365 days? I hope we're not going to stay here that long. Badger reckons we may get 14 days out of this lot, do Don't you believe it, son. When things go right, perhaps. But you never get leave in the Navy when things go wrong. And here's something else that's gone wrong. Mr. Petty Officer Herbert. Blimey. Weasel face. I'd like to know if it's the same Herbert they used to talk about in Malta. The one they put on the beach because underwater service didn't seem to agree with him. All right, now, pay attention on the mystic. Turn up. Yeah. Stand up. Don't you try to be funny with me, Tanner. You may be big, but you're not big enough to beat me. Got it? I'd like to ask you something, Petty Officer Herbert. Well? Was you ever in Malta? I was. Why? I thought so. That explains a lot. Now, listen to me, Tanner. I know all about you, too. You didn't come in yesterday. You had 14 years' service, and look how far you've got. And all because you can't stay out of trouble. Well, I'm warning you, if it's trouble you're looking for, you'll get it. Death or glory, boys, you may be. But it doesn't mean you don't have to knuckle down to proper discipline. All right, now, pay attention to me, the lot of you. The skipper's got something to say to you tomorrow morning. What it's all about, I don't know, and I don't want to know. It's not my job. I'm here to see you crowd behave yourselves. Look clean on divisions and report your present and correct. And that means you'll have to turn out a lot smarter than you did this morning, Sims. Understand? Okay. And that's OK, all right? OK. I mean, right, all. Have you packed Jackson's personal belongings? Aye, they're all ready. Mm. We'll see they're down on the jetty first thing in the morning. Aye, aye. Oh, Badger. Yes, Petty Officer? You're senior reading here, aren't you? Yes, Petty Officer. Then square your cap up. See what I mean, Sprog? Here we are, miles from home, stuck out on a flaming iceberg with the butcher of Belson for a Petty Officer. The only feminine genders within striking distance are a bunch of ruddy sheep, and for why? I'll tell you for why. 
for going back on ratings regulations, section one, paragraph one. Never volunteer for nothing. Got it, Sprague? Never volunteer. Inspector, and that's the reason for my talking to you this morning. In view of what's happened, we've decided to give you the opportunity to volunteer again. You came here prepared to undertake hazardous duties. You now know exactly what that means. If any man wants to stand down, no one's going to challenge him with lack of guts. Each man must decide for himself. All right, Perry, sir. Bunny! Hup! All those willing to re-volunteer, one face forward. March! Thank you very much. All right, stand at ease. Now, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Shore leave, sir. Shore leave? Yes, sir. But there's nothing to go ashore for here. Just the idea of being able to go somewhere, sir. Now, you know as well as I do, Badger, no one's allowed to go to the mainland. For security reasons. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, then. We shan't be ready for the next trials immediately. In the meantime, we shall do our best to keep you interested. All right, carry on, fellow. Buddy! Hup! Now, pay attention. You've all heard what's been said. You ought to be kept interested. And that's what I'm here for. At 1100 hours, you report to stores. Each man will draw himself a swab, broom, emery paper, wire scrubber, and paint scraper. Stand up, Badger, what's the matter with you? When you get back to your mess stick, change for PT. You've got five minutes. Body. Right, turn. No, march. Left, right, 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 left, right. And it's up to you to put in for any replacement components you need so that we can go straight ahead with further bench tests as soon as this man arrives. I'm sorry if this is a disappointment to you, Warden. Oh, that's all right, sir. May I know who's going to take Vincent's place? Yes. Birch mentioned a man by the name of uh, Bradville. Do you know him? No, sir. I can't say I do. Apparently, he's been working on DPT as a surface charge. That Bradville? He's nothing to do with us, sir. Well, the Admiralty are going to try and borrow him. If they do, I know you'll give them all the help you can. Yes, of course, sir. to try a bit of that out on Herbert sometime, Haggis. What for? Do you reckon Herbert's a music lover or something? Nah, might charm him. Same way they do snakes. Oh. Must say I'm very partial to dropping music myself. So was my favorite party. She could play the piano a treat. Just tunes, you know, nothing classical. But she had a beautiful touch, beautiful. What was she like to look at, Badge? Fat and 40? She was not. She was small. Fluffy, I suppose you'd call her. But how she loved a good time. Forever getting into her evening dress she was, morning, noon and night. Loved a good laugh, too. Sometimes I think she only went out with me because I made her laugh so much. That's why I married you, Bash. <laughs> Get out of it. I'm serious. We was engaged. I bought her a diamond ring the size of a walnut. And I paid the first installment on a semi-detached shore base. I was even getting out of the Navy directly war ended. And then that basket Cleland dropped anchor. What, another Matlow? A yank. A pair of nylons in one hand, a pack of cigarettes for her dad in the other, and I'm left up on the beach. By the time I get back from the med, she's joined the export drive and go to the States as a war bride. Well, it just goes to show, mate. Never trust a girl with a beautiful touch. I didn't get my ring back, neither. All I got was a postcard. On one side, it had, ta Charlie, thanks for everything. And on the other, God bless America, and a picture of the Statue of Liberty. <clears throat> Attention, domestic. At ease, please. I thought you'd like to know that tomorrow morning we're expecting some new arrivals from the mainland. This means that we should be starting serious work again. Well, we shan't be sorry about that. I suppose not. It also means, and this came as a surprise to us, that you'll be having two new messmates on this deck. It'll be a bit of a squash, but I know you'll make the best of it. 
Any questions? Yes, sir. Any cooks amongst them, sir? Cooks? Yes, sir. No badger, no cooks, I'm afraid. Thank you, sir. Anything else? All right, carry on, please. Good night, everyone. Good night, sir. All right, first thing in the morning, Sims, Macintosh, fix up another bunk in here. I'll get turned in, all of you. It's past time. Would you believe it? A lousy sixpence a day extra and more bleeding mouths for poor old Badger to feed. You know, I think they might have allowed us to finish this job ourselves. Don't you, Wharton? You'd better get down there, Len. They'll be alongside in a moment. Hey, Lofty, Badge, here they come. Isn't it? Well, let's go. Blimey. We've been occupied. My name's Bradville, reporting here for duty. How'd you do? Have a good trip? Fine, like a bird. Good. See to these men, will you, Petty Officer? Aye, sir. I'd better take you up to see the old man straight away. Okay. See you fellas later. Okay, Lieutenant. You look as though you come for a long stay. That's right, mister. The name's Herbert. Petty Officer Herbert. Okay, Petty Officer Herbert. My name's Butch. This here's Karminsky. Otherwise known as Shorty. Hiya. Well, when you've got all your gear together, I'll show you quarters. Okay, thanks for the hitch, fellas. See you later. Come in. Lieutenant Bradville, come aboard, sir. Ah, oh, Bradville. Very glad to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Sit down. You a good trip? Yes, sir. Well, I suppose they put you in the picture before you left. Well, they told me in Washington that uh, you've been trying to use DPT underwater, same as we have. Yes, and he won't behave itself. I believe you've had better luck with it. As a static charge, yes, we've certainly got it under control as far as surface mines are concerned, but uh, we've only just turned over to underwater work. I, uh, I understand you've a torpedo here specially designed for the job. That's right. Wharton will have to explain it to you. He's our propulsion expert and the chap you'll be working with. I'm afraid I'm just a sailor, not a scientist. Oh, well then, uh, perhaps this is the moment I should tell you, sir, that uh, strictly speaking, I'm just a scientist, not a sailor. Oh? Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, I never even saw the sea until 48, when the Navy began to take an interest in DPT. I see. So if my drill seems a bit unorthodox at times, I'm hoping you'll excuse me, Commander, just the way they do at home. Oh, that's all right, Bradville. How about your men? Oh, they're 100% Navy. A couple of good boys. They helped me put the first DPT mine together, and they've been with me ever since. Here's your mystic. Those are your bunks. These are your mates. Now, I'm told you're here on special duties, so you'll get your orders from your own officer. But while you're on this stick, you're under my jurisdiction. And if you don't know what that means, they'll tell you. Carry on. Say, which one of the British Isles is this? Welcome to Sorrento, boys. Is that what it's called? Well, it's what we call it when we have company. Now, let me introduce you. Badger. Sprogg. Hello. Hankies, and I'm Lofty. This is Shorty. I'm Butch. Pleased to meet you. Hiya. See what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of cool around these parts. We're ever so sorry, but the coal man forgot to call. Otherwise, we'd have had the central heating turned on for you. Now turn it up, Badge. Stop taking the water. You go and pop the kettle on, eh? He don't mean nothing. You could do with a cup of tea, couldn't you? How's that? A cup of tea, mate. Remember what I told you? No matter what time it is, it's always time for a cup of tea. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure, thanks. I, uh, I love tea. Wharton? Yes? I brought Lieutenant Bradford. Oh. Thank you, Len. Glad to know you, Lieutenant. I understand you and I will be working together. That's right. Did you have a nice trip? Fine, thanks. That's where we shake down, huh? Yes. That's your bunk. Good. Well, they tell me you live pretty hard here. Well, it's not soft. Depends what you're used to. I guess that's right, too. 
I'm glad we're going to be working together in this, Wharton. The commander's been telling me what a great job you've done here. Yeah, it was Vincent who did the great job. I just helped him. Well, maybe, but I'd certainly be glad if you'd help me in the same way. Well, of course. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I know, but I... Well, what I'm trying to say is I'm, I'm hoping we can lick this thing together. Quite honestly, Bradville, I don't think there's much left to lick. You'll see what I mean when you read Vincent's notes. I'll leave them here for you. It's just bad luck that he isn't here to finish the job himself. Well, if I'm going to be ready for you tomorrow, I'd better go across the left. Oh, those two men you brought with you. Yes? They won't be allowed to go on the trials, you know. We've got our own chaps for that. See you later. That's a lot, sir. Everything nice and comfy, sir. What's that? I said everything nice and comfy, sir. We've got to make them nice and comfy, you know, Curly. Don't get dollar customers every day, do you? Can't make no exceptions. It's all laid down. They'll get the regulation issue, same as what you get. Incorruptible, isn't he? We met him before. Long service on bad stations. You boys have been to see them. Listen, mister. The United States Navy has 1,964 surface craft. And they're not sailed by Englishmen. That's a fact. Now, no offense, mate. A lot of us get stuck in dry dock, you know. Okay. And you know, lads, these will tickle your ribs for you. Sign there, will you? Here you are. Now, talk, Early. Just a minute, Turner. We'll have your valuable autograph, too. What do you think I'm going to do with this? Flog it to the natives? So long as I have your signature, you can do what you like with it. That guy reminds me of Butch. Who's that? Remember Charlie Manlick in Manila? Manlick? That's slow pit. If he gave you a handful of rice, you'd count every grain first. Here, yeah, talking of rice, either of you two married? No, sir. You, Butch? Sort of. Why? I'll say he's married. He's married to an English girl. No. Was she ever in Southampton, Butch? Southampton, England? Yeah. Sure, during the war in the Normandy shuttle. Now, don't tell me. Your wife, she's short, fluffy, plays the piano with both hands, and her name's Doris, right? Right. Blimey. Who's your friend? Dr. IQ? Thank you. First batch. It's all together, Ash. Good. Here, do you remember Cleland? Cleland? You mean Badges Cleland? Yeah. Hey, Lofty. This is him. This is Cleland. No. What's the panic? What do you think we ought to do about it, Angus? Well, we'd best keep it quiet from Badger. Keep what quiet from Badger? The Joe Cleland. Hey, wait a minute, will you guys quit talking in riddles? So he's badgered, I'm calling. What's so wrong about that? He stole his girl, didn't you? Stole his girl? Doris! He's gonna tear your guts up when he knows who you are. Hey, wait a minute. Don't tell me that badger's a guy called Charlie. He used to write all those stupid letters. Why, he used to make her laugh. Well, that's what he told us. They was engaged, matey. Engaged? That isn't what she told me. He didn't even get the first base with her. I shouldn't try and tell him that. Sure, I'll tell him. I ain't got another hide. Now, wait a minute, Butch. We don't want to start no trouble here. I'm only warning you. If you want to stick your neck out... Hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to give me? But you I take it on. You got this in the world. Doris ain't no hell in the Troy, kid. Let's not start another war. Now, quiet a moment. Look, I'm telling you, she easy, wasn't his girl. Look, she was his girl. Don't make yourself great. Look, I saw everyone. Quiet! 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 Instead of squabbling like a bunch of kids, supposing we try and get this thing sorted out. See here, Booch. It's maybe none of our business, but I'm thinking for the sake of peace and quiet, we'd best forget your name's Cleland and keep off this subject. You're down right, Jock. Now look, Butch, it happened seven years ago. She's 7,000 miles away, and we gotta work together on this rock. So let's drop the whole thing, huh? That's okay by me. I'm not starting anything. Come on, let's make up our bunks. Get me some water, will you, Sprung? Think of it. This has got its funny side, you know. 
poor old Badge. But you can't help laughing, can you? <laughs> Well, there we are then. All dig in. One for you. And you. And you. Share and share alike. That's my motto. Isn't it, Lofty? <laughs> What's the matter with you? It's not as funny as all that, is it? Is it? bangers before. Bangers? Uh, sausages. Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Are they something special? They are, rather. See what I mean? jumping, arms raising sideways together. Commence. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Body! Steady! Hips up. Heels raising, knees bending. Commence. Heels race. Bend. Stretch. Bend. Stretch. Keep rise to the front, Badger. Never mind who's looking at you. You're not shy, are you? Bend. Stretch. Bend. Stretch. Hurry. Steady. All right now. Running on the spot. Commence. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right. Come on now, Badger. Get him up there. And you, Sims. You're more like a bunch of chorus girls. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Well, there she is. Tom Stidler, Mark II. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. I hope we're going to be friends. As soon as you're happy about that warhead, Badville, she's ready to go. Mm -hmm. All my tests are finished. Oh, I see. I've got all the figures there if you'd like to see them. It's fine, thanks. Unless you'd like to see her running on the bench first. Uh, no, I don't think so. At least not yet. Well, then, uh, what would you like to do? Well, I hate to break your heart, Wharton, but I guess our first job is to strip her right down again. Strip her right down again? That's right. But all my tests are finished. Yes, I know, but I still have to check for myself. I've been testing propulsion units for quite a few years, you know, Bradville. That's just the point. I haven't. But I do know something about DPT. Sooner or later, we're going to have to fix a warhead on this, and when we do, I've got to satisfy myself that everything's going to behave all right. You mean you won't take our word for it? Is that it? Now, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question instead. That torpedo exploded within three seconds of leaving the tube, right? Yes. Why? Well, you've read Vincent's notes. Six times. I can't find any fault with them, and I'm still asking why. Well, if Vincent was right... On paper. All right, on paper, then. But isn't it more likely to have been something outside his control? A metal floor, say, or a fractured fuel pipe? Something that could happen inside any torpedo. 
A million to one chance, yes, it could have been. And here's another million to one chance. It could have been something you or Vince had missed when you were testing. Now, wait a minute, Warden. Don't get me wrong. Maybe I'm no diplomat, but as I see it, the next time this tiddler goes out on trial, it'll be of my responsibility. If anything goes wrong, it'll be because of something I've missed. That's why we've got to start from the beginning. Okay? Hey, fellas. Just a minute, Bradville. We've got our own men for this work. I appreciate that, and they obviously know their job. Well, then what's the point? Oh, your British Admiralty gave me permission to bring these men here because they're used to DPT, they're used to me, and, well, we're a team. That's why I asked for them, certainly not to squeeze your boys out. I see. Look, Warden, the success of this project depends just as much on what you can teach me as what I can teach you. All right, fellas. Lieutenant Warden, second class torpedoman, Karminsky and Cleland. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Come on over, boys, and have a look at this midget. The British designed it specially for use with our old pal DPT. The lieutenant here knows all the gimmicks. By the time he's through with us, we're going to know them, too. We've got to know how every part behaves under any set of conditions. When we do, she'll be ready for the warhead. Lieutenant? It's all yours. Well, I suppose we'd better begin by uh, stripping her right down. Right, you'll find some body spanners on the bench over there. You get to work on the forepart, and you start stripping down the tail. Yes, sir. Of a squid, babe. This is going to take us off the unemployed list. Yes, just getting used to my afternoon nap, too. Don't know about you, Lofty, but seeing one of those things makes me feel funny inside. Especially when I think of old Jackson. Don't worry, son. I'd sooner have a quick death in one of them than a long lingering one under Mr. Petty Officer Herbert. Turn, get in. I'll tell you something. Either this boat's a lot smaller than the last one, or I'm growing up. Fire! Torpedo fire, sir. Deflection setting a bit slow, Macintosh. Aye, we can do better than that, sir. All right, let's try again, shall we? Aye, uh, sir. Target in sight. Bearing green 3 0. Green 3 0. I'll let it go. Right, faster. place to park yourselves and relax. Right. Hey, Badger, I just want you to know that the ratio of noxious gases to heat coming out of that stove is darn near lethal. Lethal? It's worse than that, sir. It's deadly. It's like living in a gas works. You come from a hardy race, Badger. Thank you, sir. Now, what I wanted to tell you, men, is this. Lieutenant Wharton and I have been talking over the results of our tests. We've come to the conclusion that the first stage of the job is over. Cigar, Lieutenant? Yeah, thanks. What comes next? Hmm. Before I tell you, let's have a little drink. Or is that against Navy regulations? Oh, I reckon we could overlook it this time. Couldn't we, Butch? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> Use a drop of this, Badger, for purely medicinal purposes. 
Thank you, sir. Good luck, sir. Well, to get back to the job, we're all set to load up a warhead and get it fixed on. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Badger. So, Karminsky, first thing in the morning, you'll report to Lieutenant Wharton, and Cleland, you'll help me charge the warhead with DPT. What is it, Badger? Nothing, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. You got that, Cleland? Cleland. on your mind. Just a case of daylight robbery, that's all. Yeah, let's get some sleep, will you? Never seen her before? I should have. I married her. So it was you, was it? The one and only Cleland. Caught up with you at last, eh? Look, we're not gonna get anywhere. I'm not wanting to get anywhere with you, Cleland. You smell too strong. What the heck's going on? Will you wait a minute? This is settling day, Cleland. Least land's over and done with. And the almighty dollar's not gonna help you this trip. You just quit squawking for a minute. You horrible slug, you. You had to wait till I went to sea before you come crawling out from under your stone, didn't you? Yeah, I'm warning you. Lay off before I flatten you. You Yanks is all the same. A lot of dirty, yellow, Stephen sneaking. Oh, Limey's gonna talk like that to me and get away with us. Stop taking these things. It's all right. I'm gonna come. Get out of the way. We get out of the way. Oh. Now look, Badger. Get out of the way. all this about? Fighting on the Mystic, eh? And our American cousins, too. What's the matter? International relations getting a bit strained, are they? I thought I should find you in it, Turner. You can't keep out of nothing, can you? Well, what's the trouble this time, eh? He hasn't got anything to do with it. You speak when you're spoken to. Come on, Turner, I'm waiting. I've got nothing to say, Petty Officer Herbert. Do you want to be up with your cap off in the morning? Half a minute. If you want to know exactly what happened... Shut up! You won't learn much, P.O., unless you listen to someone who's prepared to talk. Ah, so you're coming out of your shell now, are you, Macintosh? Perhaps you can throw a little light on the subject then. Aye, maybe I could. But this is a private matter. It belongs to the mess deck. And I think if I were you, petty officer, I'd leave it to be settled here. All right, but just watch out, that's all. I'm warning you for the last time, the whole lot of you. Now, go on. Get back to your bunks. The next time you won't get away with it. Feel better in the morning, mate. Good night, Butch. Good night.
Put the prop flap. Check all the gauges. How is it? She's all set, sir. Gauges all reading zero, sir. Good. Well, Wharton, ready to go. All right, sir. If you'll go across to the control room, I'll fix up the microphone. Oh, yeah, and we'd better check that, too, before we start her up. All right, fellas, let's get going. Commander Sinclair, we're waiting for him now, will you please? Thank you. All correct, Bradville. Can you hear me all right? Righto, here I come. Oh, here he comes. This is it, old chap. Pip, pip. I say, the commander's with him, too. Bang on. Jolly good show. Quit clowning and open that door. Yes, sir. Jolly good show, sir. Morning. Morning, sir. Right, sir. All set, Bradville? Yes, sir. Jolly good show. Stand by for test run. Ready for test run. Start to run at very slow revs, then gradually increase. Stand by, you two. Lead on, please, Bradley. Yes, sir. Okay, switch off. Well, how do you feel about it now? It's a perfect run, sir. Good. Can you give me a date for trials, Bradville? No, sir. You're not ready? I can't say I am just yet, sir. Oh. But what else can we do out of the water? Well, for one thing, I think we'd better recheck all Vincent's figures against our own. For another, I'd like you to run her some more, Wharton, then strip her down again and see how she's taking it. You two fellas get some chow and report back here afterwards. No, sir, I'm afraid I can't give you a date just yet. What's worrying you, Bradville? Well, if you want to know, Commander, it's this run we've just had. But there was nothing wrong. It was bang on. Yeah. That's what worries me. Yeah, what do you mean by that? I don't get it. Well, I just wish he'd make up his mind, that's all. You know, Shorty, it was like I was telling you. We picked the wrong place for a vacation this year. 
I don't like the accommodation. I don't like the climate. I don't like the customs of the natives. Well, we ain't going to get any refund, buddy, so come on and feed. And I hate the food. Come on. Hey, you, Sims. Yes, Pew? Come here. That trouble last night. Who started it? It was Turner, wasn't it? No. No? Huh? Well, who was it? I'm not saying. Ah. So you joined the rest of the Mephisims? All right. I shall know how to deal with you. Go on, up it. Hello, Brad. Hi. Everything goes smoothly? Smooth enough. How are things with you? Our chaps are ready whenever you are. Good. Is the, that the sub they're going to use in the trials? That's right. You know, you could be a big help to me. Honestly? Could I? Yes. How? Oh. Well, they made me pass my navigation, but I never got around to taking one of those out. Oh, that's easy enough, if that's all you want. Well, uh, that's all I want to start with. Hello? Where's our head cook and bottle washer? Out in the galley loft, he won't come in. What's up now, then? These yanks, he says he won't sit down at the same table. Like a flipping film star, isn't he? He's like a child instead of a grown man. Well, believe it or not, fellas, at last I got me an appetite. Well, you picked the right day for it, Shorty. Got a surprise for you. Corned beef hash. Where's Boots? Oh, he's around. Well, isn't he coming in for his grub? Guess not. You don't want any. I must say he's acting temperamental as well. Oh, Badger's playing it that way too, huh? Well, they say Tom's a great healer. They'll get over it. After you, Spock. How much this guy Badger's got to beef about so you all learn the meaning of the word gratitude. Yeah, come off it, Shorty. What's Badge got to be grateful for? Did you ever meet Doris? No. Well, I did, and I'm here to tell you she is churse. No kidding, man. She is churse. You mean she was smushing a looker? Yeah, pipe down, Spock. Go on, Shorty. Well, get this. Here's a dame that hasn't been tied in the bonds of holy matrimony more than five minutes, and she's got the best man in the front parlor trying to get him to untie the knots. No. Yeah, and I was the best man. Do you mean she doesn't love Butch? Love him? Sure she loves him. Butch is a man, ain't he? And Doris loves men. There's only one thing she loves better than men, that's money. Because with money, she can buy scotch. Doris loves scotch. Man, when she's loaded with scotch, she's the greatest lover of all time. Believe me, that guy Badger don't know what he's missed. Game and Rob, first Rob to us. Come on, partner, let's pull our socks up. Whose cards? Mine. What have we done, partner? Twelve fifty, Doc. If I don't get off this island pretty soon, you chaps have the shirt off my back. When are these confounded trials going to take place? My dear fellow, I'm quite as impatient as you are. I'm hoping to get back to sea after this job. We're still waiting on the backroom boys. How about it, Roger? Well, don't ask me. The last ten days I've done nothing but strip down what I've just assembled and then assemble what I've just stripped down. I don't know what he's waiting for. What's happened to all this, what do they call it? Yankee know-how. As far as I can make out, he spends most of his time trying to find something wrong with Vincent's figures. Of course, he never does. Aren't you with him a lot, babe? Rather, he's terrifically keen. I've never known a chap with such a passion for said boats. What the devil is he so interested in? Everything, sir. The whole works, from bow to stern. We've even been running through fire orders. Sounds a very thorough type. One heart. That's all very well. I'd like to know what it's got to do with DPT. No bread. Sorry, Doc. No. No bit. Well, I suppose we'd better have the cards on the table then, partner. Hi, Wharton. Well, I've got good news for you. Really? Yes, we're ready for the trials. I'm glad to hear it. I thought you'd be. I can't say I found what I've been looking for, but on the other hand, I found nothing to justify holding up any longer. I see. As a matter of fact, Badville, I'd come across to have a word with you. Okay. I hear you've been putting in a lot of time with Babe Sterling on the Zed boat. Yes. Why? Well, isn't that where the button's pressed? And is that why you've been learning how to give fire orders? Oh. So you've been checking up on me? No. But I would like to know what's at the back of your mind. I should have thought that was obvious. When the next torpedo's fired, I figured to be sitting behind that periscope. Has Sinclair agreed to this? I haven't discussed it with him yet. Then let me tell you, he never will. 
No. You really are determined to make this an all-American party, aren't you, Bradville? Well, don't think it's any surprise to me. It doesn't matter a tinker's cuss to you that our chaps have been sweating their guts out for the last two years, does it? Or that Vincent was blown to bits when he was practically home. Act your age, Warden. Well, what contribution have you made? Just tell me. What have you taught us about DPT that we didn't already know? Nothing. That's it, nothing. That torpedo is still Vincent's, as much as it ever was. You haven't made a single modification to it. And yet you're coolly proposing to cash in on his work and grab all the credit for yourselves. So that's it. That's what's been biting your guts out all this time. And here I've been fooling myself into thinking this was a problem we were going to lick together. Together? Yes, together. But you've never given our fellows a chance. Listen, Warden. I'm just a scientist, not a flag-waving fanatic. I've looked on this as another job to be done. I can see now that to you it's always been a matter of national prestige. Oh, you're dead right. I haven't contributed anything. I can't say right now that what happened last time won't happen again. But until I can, you can take a running jump because I'll be taking the risks myself, the same as Vincent did. And we'll see what Sinclair has to say about that. You want the trial, Bradville, although you're saying that the element of risk is no less than it was last time? That's right, sir. You're convinced it's a justifiable risk? I am, sir, to this extent. Either this project stops or it goes ahead. There's nothing further we can do out of the water. That's good enough. We go ahead. Fine. I uh, take it there'll be no objection to my taking the boat out and trial myself, sir? You, Bradville? That's right out of the question. My instructions on that point are quite categorical. You can read them yourself if you like. But in view of the risks involved, sir... I'm afraid that's our responsibility. Our men here have volunteered for the express purpose of taking justifiable risks. It wouldn't be very clever if we lost you the same way we lost Vincent, would it? That goes for you too, Wharton. That's all, gentlemen. We'll arrange for trials immediately. Well, that action in there, huh? No point. No, no, not like that. They'll never rule for you that way. You gotta talk to them like this. A little later from decay, a little joke from Kokomo. Come on, baby, we need new shoes. See what I mean, natural? Oh, That's yeah. exactly what I mean. Fifteen shillings, Joey. All right, then. Two more throws, then I'll teach you crown and anchor. Crown and anchor? Okay, get on that, baby. Come on, let's go. Come on, Dave. Come on, Dave. Come on. You always play that tune, Haggis. What's it called? Come back to Sorrento. Ah, it's smashing. I don't know why, but it makes me feel sad, though. Is Sorrento a place, Haggis? It's an island in the Mediterranean. Belongs to the Aitais. I'm going there some days, Prog. You are? I have I'm finished with the Navy. Just to lie on my back and get warm in the sunshine and forget. It's good to forget sometimes, Prog. Do you play the bagpipes too? Oh, no. I hate them. <laughs> and you a Scotchman. Now listen, Sprog. It's Scot or Scotsman. Scotch is the stuff you drink. Sorry. And here's a trade secret. Lots of jocks hate the bagpipes. We just don't admit it to the Sassenach, see? What's a... What's a Sassenach? Sprog. A Sassenach is anyone from south of the border. Oh, Mexican. No, Sprog. South of the Scottish border. I mean Englishman. Oh, I get you. I wish I could play something, Haggis. Even a bagpipe. I've always wanted to. Would this be any good to you, Sprog? Can I play it? Oh, you can have it. I never use it. Do you mean it, I guess? Of course I do. <laughs> Who'd learn me? Oh, there's nothing to it, man. You can teach yourself. Thanks, I guess. Thanks very much. There you are, Butch. Thank you. All right, pay attention. Where's Badger? In the galley. Get him. Hey, Lane, have you heard? What? I'm taking the Zed boat out on the trial. You're not. Yes, it's terrific. But how about Wharton? They won't let him go. Can't stop now. See you later. There's going to be a fresh trial tomorrow. You'll draw lots as usual to decide who's going. Whoever it is will report to Lieutenant Sterling immediately afterwards. Got it? Right, carry on. Well, come on, then. Who wants to win an Xmas turkey? Got a piece of writing paper and pencil, someone? Yeah, some here, Lofty. Charles Shorty. Afraid we can't cut you two in on this, but you can help us pass the hat round. Now, where's Badge going again? We're having the draw now, Badge. Are you coming in? You don't need me. If there's one left over, it's mine. Oh, you've carried this thing quite far enough, Badger. You're making a fool of yourself. 
It's all right, you talking, Agish. You wouldn't understand what I've suffered. No? I might for all that. Be a fine world if we all went round wearing our hearts and our sleeves, wouldn't it? I don't care what you say. I've still got a bit of pride left. There's nothing wrong with these two fellows, Badger, and you know it. It's about time you stopped giving this performance and faced up to the fact that Doris isn't the girl you thought she was. Who says she isn't? I say she isn't. And as a matter of fact, I think you've known she isn't for quite a long time, too. Agish, Badge, come on, we're waiting. Come on, Badge. Forget all about it. It's just coming. Hey, about time, too. All right, then. Take your choice and try your luck. The paper marked with a cross wins a free trip round the bay and back. There you are, Sprook. Come in. Now, oh, Macintosh. So you're the lucky man? Yes, sir. Good. I was rather hoping it would be you. Thank you, sir. Well, here we are. I just wanted to put you in the picture. It'll take about four hours to reach the trial ground. Control and target ships are steaming up overnight, and we rendezvous with them here at 12 <laughs> Target coming on course now, sir. Thank you, Yeoman. Hello, Control. Target calling. On course now. Speed seven knots. Hello, Target. This is Control. Maintain your course and speed. Exercise commencing. Off. Hello, Nero. Control calling. Target on course. Act independently and carry out exercise as ordered. Over. Hello, Control. This is Nero. Roger. Switch on recorder. Hello, Control. This is Nero. Diving now. Out. Firing station, Macintosh. Aye, aye, sir. Are your settings on? 45 knots. Range, 2,000. Isn't our target the old Northern Star? That's her. It was either this or the breaker's yard. I brought her into Dover from Bon Alley three times. She's had some narrow squeaks. Oh, she's going up this time. Target in sight. Bearing green two five. Green two five. Target course three four zero. Oh. Course three four zero. Oh. Target speed seven knots. Seven knots. Deflection ten left. Ten left. We're coming on to our firing course. Stand by. Ready, sir. Sights coming on. Fire! 
Pull ahead both engines. Stand by to pick up survivors. Hello, Nero. This is Control. Hello, Nero. This is Control. Report my signals. Report my signals. Over. And the boat. Give way, starboard. Way to get up. Hello, Nero. This is control. Hello, Nero. This is control. Pause. Sir, lag it along domestic. Yes, carry on, please. Come along, Billy officer. Aye, aye, sir. Sorry to say, I have bad news for you. The trial has been a failure. Lieutenant Sterling and your messmate Macintosh have been lost. There's not a lot I can say. We shall miss them both very much. Mystic. Oh, I've forgotten. Macintosh left this letter with me. It's addressed to all of you. Guy. Yeah, he sure was. Go on, bet you're senior. I'd rather you, Lofty. say this, but I know I owe you an apology. Skip it. No, I don't want to skip it, Brad. I'm going to say it. I've been stupid. I've behaved like an idiot. A short-sighted, obstinate idiot. I was so certain Vincent was right. If it's any consolation to you, I don't feel too clever myself. Vincent missed something. We missed it, too. 
Right now, there's a couple of guys lying out there at the bottom of the sea. This is one of those letters you hope is never going to be read. But in case it is, would one of you be a pal and see to the following? The black tin box at the bottom of my kit bag is to go to Andrew McIntosh, care Mrs. Moffitt, Kidlockery, Fife. That's my kid. Incidentally, he lives with his grandparents. It's only some photographs and letters of his mother who died having him. I want him to have some remembrance of her. Also, would you write a note to my mother? Just put what happened in a way she can understand without upsetting the Admiralty. That's the lot, really, and thanks. Sprog, you keep on with your mouth organ practice, and you'll soon be playing real fine. And I hope Badger's going to show some sense over his row with Butch. Life's too short, Badge, for bearing grudges. You've been a grand lot to be with. Good luck, all. J.E. McIntosh. Aggies. Ships. What? The Sparks just told me on the quad. Where's Lofty? Up there. Hi. Lofty. Lofty. Oh, no, I thought you were supposed to be working up top. Yes, I've been. Sims? Look. That's Tawny. Yes, Pure? What are you doing up here? Nothing. Ah, oh, that's what it looks like. I've finished up top. Oh, I've finished, have you? Then why didn't you report to me for further duties, eh? You got yourself into bad company, Sims, and bad ways, too. You wouldn't take my advice, would you? So now I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm having you up before the officer of the day. You're not going to put him in the rattle for that. More for finishing this job before time. For gossiping with you. Then take me up as well. You get back to your work, Tanner. Come on, Sims, follow me. Go on, sir. So that's what they've been debating for the last week. Two years' work gone for a button. Can't you do something about it, sir? What could I tell them, Bradville? That you're back on the bench testing, that you're still not sure whether the trouble's DPT or some new factor? What do they expect? To collect on every throw? They've lost four valuable men and two Z boats, Bradville. You must see their point of view. I know, sir, but oh, I... Oh, to blazes with them. If they can't see the waste, the stupidity of getting men like Vincent and Babe and the others chuck their lives away for what now amounts to nothing... Now I know how you must be feeling. Come and have a drink, both of you. I'll see you over in the wardroom. That's that. Perhaps your Navy Department will let you carry on from where we left off. Maybe. I'll tell you something, though. After that bench run yesterday, I made up my mind to one thing, Raj. What's that? We haven't been wrong about DPT. There's nothing unstable about it. You could give it to your kids to play with. No, the trouble isn't in the warhead. It lies somewhere behind it. I'm darn sure of that. All right, fellas, take off the warhead, return it to the magazine. Okay, when's the next run, Lieutenant? There won't be any next run. We're through. Well, isn't that just like the blooming Navy? 
You just settle down somewhere, nice and comfortable. One big happy family. And some old clod up in London gets wind of it. And if there's one thing keeps an admiral awake at night, it's the idea of a sailor with a nice cozy berth somewhere. I dare say we're going to miss your cooking badge, but will I be glad to see a two-legged animal that don't have to shave every morning? Get out of it. That goes for me, too, shorty. Boy, right now I'm going into Joe's place on East 22nd Street, and I'm having me eight beers all in a row. And that's just for ballast. After that, I'm hitting every joint in town. Hello, Spock. What did he give you? Oh, that's all right, Lofty. I only got a caution. Oh, Herbert will love that. I don't think the pigs like him any more than what we do. Well, come on, who's going to help Uncle Badge down below? Grab it. All right, sir. So we got our sailing orders, eh, Spook? Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever catch up with each other again, Lofty. Oh, I dare say. The Navy's a small world. I hope we do. I've learned a lot from you and Haggis. And Badge. You'll be all right, son. Don't let them trample on you, that's all. Lofty. Yeah? I'm glad we're going in one way. So I'm glad we're going in a number of ways, Brooke. Yes, but... But I had the wind up, Lofty. I was scared. Couldn't help it after what happened to her, I guess. Now, don't let that worry you, son. We all get the wind up one time or another. Is that the truth, Lofty? Of course it is. It's just that some of us covers it up better than others, that's all. Anyway, it's all done with now. Tomorrow we'll be packing up this home from home. By this time next week, I dare say, we'll all be scattered across the face of the flipping globe. Come on, give us a minute. Okay. something. We missed it too. Right now there's a couple of guys lying out there at the bottom of the sea. I'll tell you something though. The trouble isn't in the warhead. It lies somewhere behind it. It lies somewhere behind it.
A stretcher at the double, Dawson, and call the M.O. Hi, sir. Now stand back, everyone. There's nothing to see. Come along outside, everyone. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Nothing to flap about. Turn that water off, Lane. What the heck have you been doing? I had a running mat without the warhead. She exploded. I'll say she did, but what exploded? What did you do? I thought of something we never allowed for. What? We've always given her a straight run. This time I set her off course. The guiding controls. We've been pipped at the post, Brad. Only they'd given us two more weeks. That's all. As you know, gentlemen, the guiding controls are automatically lubricated with every movement of the rudders. It's our contention that the flash point of this present lubricant is too low. At engine heat, the oil ignites, combines with the oxygen, and explodes. This explosion is powerful enough to detonate the DPT charge. Then why didn't this happen during the bench test? Well, that's easy. The normal bench run is on a straight course. The guiding controls don't come into operation. Anyway, our first object during these tests was to satisfy ourselves that DPT could stand up to a certain amount of shock and vibration, and uh, I think we proved that. Well, this is certainly an attractive theory, but I fail oh, to no, see... Oh, no, gentlemen, this is, this is not a question of theory. It's a matter of fact. I, uh, I don't quite follow you, Bradville. Well, sir, we've just had an explosion of this kind on the bench. Am I to understand that further experiments have taken place since you had our orders? I gather that this occurred on the day they received your orders to discontinue experiments, sir. That's right, isn't it, Bradville? Yes, sir, that's right, sir. Well, this seems to put a new complexion on the whole project. Hey, Budge, Lofty, it's on again. What's on again? The trial. There's going to be another one. Can't stop now. Oh, no. Well, isn't that just like the flaming navy? They no sooner get you started moving out than they get you moving in again. I wonder how they carry on sometimes. I do, really. You are my lucky lads. Come along, then. The one who picks the piece of paper marked with a cross wins the Xmas turkey. The youngest gets first choice. Here you are, Sprock. Nothing. No luck for the gentleman. You have a try, sir. Well, I should have listened to me old mum. She always told me to keep away from the perishing water. Blimey, a blankety blank. Well, I don't have to draw mine, do I? Better luck next time, gents. How'd you spell memento, Sprog? No use asking me, Lofty. Didn't they teach you nothing at that orphanage? Here. M-I-M-M-E-N-T-O-E-T-O, -E memento. Of course, top, eh? My kit ready, Sprog. I'll accept your cap, Lofty. Well, that can't be far away. He used it for the draw last night. There it is up there. Here, I'm going to be left behind. How about another cup of chow before you go, eh, Lofty? I haven't the time, thanks, Badger. Oh, well. Might as well clear away the empties, then. Now, don't you forget, I got something extra special laid on for your supper tonight when you get back. So don't let me down, will you? Oh, not likely. What you looking for, son? Nothing, not you. Oh, don't. We've had the draw, haven't we? What are you trying to find? You can't change nothing now, you know. Turner! You were due down on that jetty exactly three minutes ago. What's the matter with you? Look after that for me, Sprook. Come on, get a move on. Feeling a bit chilly around the ankles, are you? Well, I've heard a lot about death and glory from that big mouth of yours since you've been here. I thought I shouldn't find you so ready to jump to it when he really came to the point. But you're not going adrift now, Turner. I'm going to see you safe aboard and wave you goodbye if it's the last thing I do. This little trip of yours may be going to save me a lot of trouble in the future. You ought to allow, sir, but you always wanted to draw me out, haven't you? Get down to that jetty! Well, now you have. Goodbye, boys. So long, Lofty. Wow, what's this? Another British heavyweight in training?
sleeping beauty. Yeah. You all saw that, didn't you? You saw what happened. Well, we sure did. If he gets back, he's gonna find himself in cells. I don't know about the British Navy, but with us, that's uh, it's a court-martial offense. They're all witnesses, every one of you. Yes, sir, when a petty officer strikes a rating... 20 years, 20 years at least in Leavenworth. What do you mean, strike a rating? Well, sure, you slugged him first. We all saw you, didn't we, fellas? Sure, sure did. did. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. All right. I've got it. That'll take them. Target, this is control. Maintain your course and speed. Trial commencing. Off. Hello, Cato. This is control. Target on course. Act independently and carry out practice orders. And good luck to you. Over. I'd just love to know how Bradville got down the Admiral, sir. Oh, he trapped it beautifully. The old man kept on saying, no, you can't take her on the trial. But Bradville wouldn't let go. Finally, the Admiral, in desperation, said, I'll only agree if your people will. And he'd already got a clearance from them, so that was that. Everything all set, Lofty? No, no, sir. Hello, Control. This is Cato. Diving now. Keeping our fingers crossed. Out. Switch on the recorder. Well, they say third time lucky, sir. I lost it. Take it down. Aye, aye, sir. Go ahead, both. Target in sight. Bearing green one seven. Green one seven. Target course two nine zero. Oh. Course two nine zero. Oh. Target speed eight knots. Eight knots. Reflection eight left. Eight left. Sight's coming on. Stand by, Lofty. Stand by. Ready, sir. Side, Sprog. You won't see nothing out there now. You should be back by now, you know. 
But I can't figure. It's just why guys like Lofty and Haggis have to go sticking their necks out. What are they looking for? What do they hope to get out of it? Well, it's Brad, too, you know. How about him? Ah, he's a scientist. He's supposed to know what he's looking for. He's out to prove something. These other guys, what are they after, medals? Maybe they are looking for something, Shorty. Well, as my old man used to say to me, Sam, he said, he called me Sam because that's my name. Sam, just remember, he died a hero looks great on the other guy's tombstone. It's like they're washing up, chum. Someone's got to do it. Sprogan, what's the good of me making that fire up if you keep that flaming door open? Switch your lights on. Do me a favor. Put the kettle on, there's a good boy. Okay, bud. After eight. Am I getting cigarettes? Come yeah, on, Butch. If you want a good drag, try an English one. Thanks, Badge. Would you mind if I uh, asked you a question on a certain very delicate subject? Go ahead, shoot. Uh, <clears throat> what went wrong between you and Doris? Listen, Badge. What went wrong between Doris and you? Nothing. She just went off with you, that's all. That's right. Well, now she's gone off with an Air Corps sergeant in charge of supply. Now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a big weight off my mind. Then I've been thinking all the time that you've got something I haven't got. You mustn't take on like this. He shouldn't have gone. We shouldn't have let him go. He'll be all right, kid. Lofty can look after himself. But he didn't have to go. He didn't have to go, but he was the one who drew X marks the spot, didn't he? But he didn't. What do you mean he didn't? He drew a blank, too. That's silly. There was only two blanks. You had one and I had the other. There were three blanks. There was what? They were all blanks. Lofty didn't mark a cross on any of them. What are you talking about? What put this idea in your head? When I got his cut from this morning, his paper was still in it. I had a look at it. It was blank, I tell you. Are you sure? Of course. Well, would you believe it? Fancy fiddling himself onto a crazy stunt like that. I know why I did it. Because he knew I had the window. Because he knew I didn't want to go. I should have stopped him. Somehow I... I should have stopped him. What's this? The waxworks? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, this is a fine welcome home. You made it. You brought it off. What, me and Brad? Of course we did. You can't beat a team like that, mate. We thought you'd had it, Lofty. Oh, me? No, you don't get rid of me as easy as all that. But you should have seen the target. Up she went. Woof. Never come down again. Oh, 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 no, Lofty, boy, boy, no, 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 I told you to do it. Turn it up, will you? Hey, Badge. How about that extra special grub you promised me, eh? Grub? Coming up, my lord. Turtle soup, caviar, stuffed duck, peach melba, and a nice bottle of bubbly to wash it down with. Well, you can skip the bubbly, but what couldn't I do to a nice cup of char? Cup of char? Oh, come, on, come on, sit down and talk about it. Come on, what was it out there? Come on, sit down here. Come on, sit down here. Well, goodbye, Wharton. Come and see us sometime. Thanks, I'd like to. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, Lofty, give me a hand with this. Come on, Shorty, don't hold us up. Well, goodbye, Sorrento. An allo 14 days leave. 